U.S. President Donald Trump doesn't like the prime minister and he ordered his staff to attack Trudeau on TV. Those are the allegations from former White House National Security Advisor John Bolton. They come from Bolton's soon to be released, as I mentioned, memoir that gives a behind the scenes look at the Trump administration. The CBC's Stephen D'Souza joins us now from New York with more on this. Hey, Stephen, great to see you. We've been hearing about this book, drips and drabs of it for the past week, I guess you could say. Those allegations, the, the stuff in the book so far, very much focused on Donald Trump and the U.S. administration. But now we're hearing specifics about Donald Trump and Justin Trudeau. Tell us a bit more about that. That's right, yeah, the former National Security Advisor writing about uh, the 2018 uh, Charlevoix G7 summit uh, where, you know, in front of the cameras, the president and the prime minister were all smiles. But John Bolton describes a bit of a different dynamic behind the scenes. And we know they've always had a bit of a testy relationship between Donald Trump and Justin Trudeau. Let's, uh, I'll read you a quick little excerpt from, uh, from that uh, meeting and the dynamic there. Bolton writes that, Trump didn't really like either Macron, the French uh, president, or Trudeau, but he tolerated them, mockingly crossing swords with them in meetings, kidding on the straight. I assume they understood what he was doing, and they responded in kind, playing along because it suited their interests not to be in a permanent tiff with the U.S. president. Now, you'll recall at that G7 summit, there was a lot of uh, consternation over the final communique that was going to come out. And Bolton writes about going into the meeting with all the world leaders, trying to hash out what was happening. And John Kelly, the chief of staff at the time, walking out as Bolton was walking in, saying, it's a disaster. And he just, Bolton describes how Trump seemed tired and unprepared, not really grasping the issues, while Macron and Trudeau were full of energy, trying to press Trump to agree to things that he didn't really want to. And the final communique was issued. And this is where Trump then got on a plane to go to Singapore for his summit with the North Korean dictator. And we will recall that he sent out a tweet afterwards because the prime minister was critical of uh, the president and steel tariffs that had been issued and that had caused a lot of tension between the two countries. And so Trump blew up on Twitter and Bolton writes about the behind the scenes of that, saying that Trump actually woke up the secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, to throw a fit about Trudeau's press conference and that uh, he then instructed his surrogates when they were on the Sunday talk shows to be quite critical and to attack the prime minister. Let me read you another excerpt from the book. This is John Bolton quoting Donald Trump in his book saying, just go after Trudeau, don't knock the others. Trudeau's a behind your back guy. And we know uh, from those Sunday interviews that in fact the White House uh, advisor and uh, economic advisor both went after Trudeau. One saying uh, that Trudeau stabbed us in the back, the other saying that there's a special place in hell for politicians like Trudeau. I remember, I remember that weekend very well. Uh, another issue, of course, that so many Canadians are thinking of right now, we've got more coverage of the, this over the show this evening, but of course it's a Huawei and Huawei's executive, Meng Wanzhou. She's in custody pending extradition to the U.S. and that is interconnected with Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver and their detainment in China. Uh, do, uh, Mr. Bolton talks about uh, the case. He talks about Canada's relationship and the U.S.'s relationship with China as well. Yeah, you know, he's a bit of a hawk, or he is a very much a hawk, and he's always taken a hard line toward China. And he saw the arrest of Meng as a pretty straightforward case. But, of course, the president, Donald Trump, has quite a complicated relationship with China. They were in the midst of trade negotiations. And so in the book, actually, Bolton takes a bit of a dig at former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, who at the time suggested that Canada not extradite Meng and not follow through on the extradition treaty. And he said that, uh, you know, the prime minister, former prime minister, was no friend of the U.S. and that both uh, Bolton as well as the vice president, Mike Pence, and secretary of state were encouraging Canada to uh, go ahead and that they promised they would bring up the case of China uh, harassing Canadian citizens and arresting Canadian citizens on their behalf. So some interesting uh, thoughts from John Bolton on China and uh, Canada and the U.S. relationship. Yeah, I'll be asking some experts throughout the show whether or not they feel like the U.S. has really done what, what John Bolton said they would in the case of, of, of course, the two Canadians detained in China. On the book itself, the president has, you know, I've seen many tweets. He's come out uh, obviously criticizing it. The administration has as well. There's a, there's a legal fight to even stop it. Where, where does that stand? Yeah, there's still, you know, a legal fight ongoing to see whether or not there's classified material in the book. I mean, obviously reporters have copies of it now, so a lot of stuff is sort of out there and sort of the horse is out of the barn. But the uh, president, as you said, has had some critical words uh, for Bolton and the book. I'll read you a tweet uh, that he sent out. Uh, he said, Bolton's book, which is getting terrible reviews, is a compilation of lies and made-up stories, all intended to make me look bad. 
Many of the ridiculous statements he attributes to me were never made pure fiction, just trying to get even for firing him like the sick puppy he is. And I should mention, of course, that uh, John Bolton himself is facing a lot of criticism because some of the, the more egregious allegations he makes against the president are things that Democrats would have liked to have seen him do in the impeachment hearings when it would have had a lot more impact and not instead putting it in a book which he will profit from. So uh, the book, as you mentioned, comes out next week and uh, perhaps we'll see more drips and drabs as the days go on. And he, of course, refused to, to, do, to go to that without being subpoenaed. So lot, lots of more interesting things to come out of this. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.